Now we see Joe Rogan on the receiving end of this, what they call a controversy, but you and I know better. It's a narcissistic smear campaign. It's exactly what it is. And as a result, he's apologizing. We're going to react to his apology video because the question is, is should Joe be apologizing? Should any of us be apologizing because narcissists go into rage because they don't like our independent free thinking? And if we do apologize, what are the possible pitfalls of that? Well, let's get into it. I wanted to make this video, first of all, because I think there's a lot of people that have a distorted perception of what I do, maybe based on sound bites or based on... Now, the first mistake that we always make when we're dealing with narcissists or dealing uh, with a smear campaign, especially when we're on the receiving end, is we can fall into the trap of thinking that, well, maybe they misunderstand us. How many of you have been there? Maybe they misunderstand me. Maybe they have a distorted perspective of me. And that's what Joe Rogan is saying here. And that's a problem because the answer is no, they don't have a distorted perspective. They know exactly who you are. Narcissists don't misunderstand you. They understand you perfectly well. The problem is, is they hate you because they do understand you. On headlines of articles that are disparaging, um, the podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation, specifically about when you're dealing with narcissists of any walk of life, they're going to accuse even your best of intentions as being dangerous. That's right. They'll find reason to take your smile, for example, or your laughter as an example, or anything good about you, and they will twist it into something negative and something sinister and something evil, and they will accuse you with it. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the podcast Joe is talking about, we don't need to go there. If you're interested, you can look up that on your own. But all you need to know is that, like in all situations with narcissists, they will twist any opportunity to point you out and to accuse you. And listen, for those of you who are going through a smear campaign right now, I do take one-on-one -on -one appointments down in the description box. You'll find access to my calendar where you can schedule some one-on-one -on -one time with me. So head on down there, schedule some one-on-one -on -one time with me, and I'd love to speak with you and help you through this healing journey. I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely. I get things wrong, but I try to correct them. We all Whenever do. I get something wrong, I try to correct it because I'm interested in telling the truth. I'm interested in finding out what the truth is. And I'm interested in f having interesting conversations with people that have differing opinions. Right. Um, I'm not interested in only talking to people that uh, have one perspective that's, that's it. but this culture of narcissism this spirit of narcissism that maybe you're dealing with in your own family or in a group of friends or at your job it wants to squash that it doesn't like independent thinking it doesn't like your freedom of expression these things are a threat to narcissists it threatens their control they literally are hateful towards people's freedom of expression open communication they just don't like it now because of this controversy and there, i'm sure there's a lot of other things going on there he is again with the because of this controversy again you and i know better it's not a controversy it's a smear campaign there are people launching a smear campaign against joe rogan and as a result joe rogan is apologizing for it which he shouldn't be I'm behind the scenes with these controversies, but uh, Neil Young has removed his music from the, the platform of Spotify and uh, Joni Mitchell and uh, apparently some other people want to as well. Um, I'm very sorry that they feel that way. I... This is a narcissistic tactic as well. The threats, the removal, it's the equivalent of kids on a playing field who take their ball and go home because the game's not going their way. Now, again, I'm not going to get into the specifics of this podcast. I don't need to. You can go and look it up for yourselves. But for anybody to say, I no longer want to be on the playing field with that guy, that guy over there who's done nothing wrong except be an open-minded thinker for being a good competitor, they might as well say Joe Rogan is successful and we don't like it. We want to go home. And here Joe Rogan is apologizing for it. It's kind of a rough ultimatum that narcissists like to give people. Well, if you're not going to do what we want, we're leaving. Okay. Bye. Maybe we should just start getting used to saying bye. Bye.
I, I, I most certainly don't want that. Uh, I'm a Neil Young fan. I've always been a Neil Young fan. I'll tell you a story at the end of this about that. One of the things that Spotify wants to do that I agree with is to put a disclaimer that these people and the opinions that they express are contrary to the opinions of uh, the consensus of experts. You know, getting into putting warnings on everything now, you know, growing up, there was ratings on movies for me, rated G for guidance, rated R for restricted. And now because of narcissism in the culture, we have to have a rating on, well, this might disagree with you. So be advised. Make sure you have a parent hold your hand so you don't go into narcissistic rage. It's just, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing that Joe Rogan has to apologize and do this, all because he has open discussions and all because he's an independent thinker. Which I think is very important. Sure, have that on there. I'm very... Joe Rogan, though, is being, by the way, very classy about this. He's like, sure, whatever. And this goes to show you the difference between narcissists and people who are just free, independent thinkers, whatever, like Joe. Like, Joe, whatever. Okay, look, put a rating on it. I don't care. I'm not going to fuss about it. Um, by the way, I'm sorry that the other musicians, I'm sorry that the other kids have to take their ball and go home. I'm sorry. It's not what I wanted. He's being very classy about it. And it shows you the difference. It shows you, you can see the clear difference. I know you see it in your own life, but you can really see it with Joe's apology here. You can see what's going on. Cut through that, that fog and that haze and you can see who the classy one here is and who the narcissists are, who the good is and who the hateful ones are. Is it not clear? Is it not clear to you to see who's hateful in this world? That spirit of hate, that spirit of narcissism and what it wishes to do, how it wants to restrict and constrict around people and choke out the individualism, choke out independent thoughts. And, and that's really what this is about. Here's Joe apologizing because he's got these narcissistic snakes that want to wrap around him and choke him and silence him. This, these podcasts are very strange because they're just conversations. And oftentimes I have no idea what I'm going to talk about until I sit down and talk to people. And that's why some of my ideas are not that prepared or fleshed out because I'm literally having them in real time. But I do my best. And they're just conversations. And I think that's also the appeal of the show. It's one of the things that makes it interesting. Um, so uh, I want to thank Spotify for being so supportive during this time. Uh, and I'm very sorry that this is happening to them and that they're taking so much heat from it. Apologizing for Spotify, too. Listen, you know, again, send the children home that don't like playing on a field with other players. Send them home. I, I don't believe that Spotify needs to feel any heat. <laughs> Joe, Joe Rogan here is by far a more appealing draw than most likely the musicians that are crying and complaining. I mean, that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't claim to have all the answers, but, you know, it. I just don't like to see narcissism try to choke out and restrict others just because narcissism is fueled off of hate. It breaks my heart. And so now the, the Neil Young story. <laughs> when I, I, I Yeah, he gets into the Neil Young story. Listen, Joe Rogan, you're a great guy. And welcome to experiencing a smear campaign. And just like the rest of us on the Royal Wheat channel, we're here for you, Joe. Hey, listen, if you need to talk to somebody about your experience with this smear campaign you're going through, Joe, give me a call. I'll talk with you. You can find access to my calendar down below. Now, I'm serious. I will talk with you because it might not get better no matter if you apologize or not. As a matter of fact, apologizing can make things worse in my own experience in dealing with narcissistic smear campaigns and with the people I help. Apologizing is never the answer. Trying to do things better is never the answer. All that's going to happen is you elevate them in authority. Narcissists become more empowered over you and they will start to look at you and put their finger down in your chest and say, you, you, you're doing it wrong and you're doing it wrong. You're not listening to us. And that's what they want to do to you, Joe Rogan. Joe, don't let it happen. 
Don't be bullied by narcissistic people. Don't be bullied by the smear campaigns. Joe, we're here for you, rooting for you. And uh, for those of you who do need help uh, with dealing with the smear campaign or with narcissistic abuse, I am available for one-on-one -on -one appointments down in the description box. You'll find access to my calendar. So get on down there and schedule that one-on-one -on -one time with me, and I'll be back with more videos for you right here on The Royal We.